Okay, today I'm going to be teaching you about Thomas Selfridge. Some background information on Selfridge is that he was born on February 8th of 1882 in San Francisco, California. He was named after his father, who was an officer for the U.S. Navy. Selfridge Jr. attended the U.S. Military Academy and graduated with the class of 1903. As you could assume, he followed in his father's footsteps, except going to the Army instead of the Navy. He received a commission to enter the U.S. Army Artillery Corps in 1903, immediately after military school. And in 1907, the Artillery Corps was separated into Field Artillery and Coast Artillery Corps. Selfridge was assigned to the 5th Field, Artiller the 5th Field Artillery Corps and during the following year, he was moved to the 1st Field Artillery Corps. Uh, the reason that Selfridge got into aviation was because he read about Alexander Graham Bell's studies involving kites. He ended up writing to Bell, asking if it was okay with him for him to watch one of his experiments that he was working on. And Bell was so impressed by his observations that he requested President Roosevelt to assign Selfridge to be an official observer. With financial help from Mrs. Bell, both Bell, one of their other accomplices, and Selfridge formed the Aerial Experiment Association, also known as the AEA, and together they developed a large kite called the Signet One. Selfridge rode prone on the kite for seven minutes, reaching 168 feet. To initially get the kite into the air, they towed it behind a boat over a lake and waited for a strong gust of wind to take it in the air. Some developments that Selfridge was a part of um, he designed the, the association's first airplane and then worked as a part on three more airplanes by the association. The first one they developed was the Red Wing. There wasn't anything too special about it, and it only got its name from the red silk that they put over the wings to, you know, give it a skin. Uh, their second plane that they developed was called the White Wing. And the special thing about it is that it had hinged ailerons. And Selfridge, on this plane, Selfridge became the first army officer to make an airplane flight in America. The third plane was the June bug. The June bug flew over one kilometer. And because of this, it was awarded the Scientific American Trophy. And then lastly, we have the Silver Dart. The Silver Dart was the first airplane that flew in Canada. All right, and now we have the tragic accident that happened with the Wright brothers. In 1908, Selfridge was asked, well, not asked, but he went to fly with Orville Wright. And the only reason Orville had agreed was to better the brothers standing with the US Army because they were trying to sell them planes. Uh, and also the Wright brothers had distrusted that uh, the AEA because they believed that they had violated the patents. Um, during the flight, Orville had reported hearing an unusual tapping sound coming from the plane. Uh, he had decided after hearing the noise, he had decided to shut down the engine with an intent to land. And soon after they heard, after they shut the engine down, they heard a loud crack from the aircraft and suddenly lost all control only at 75 feet in the air. Um, once they had hit the ground and people had started moving the rubble, it was found that Orville and Selfridge were both severely injured. Uh, they were immediately rushed, rushed to the hospital and Orville managed to make a full recovery over a long period of time and Selfridge had sadly died in the hospital that night due to how severe his injuries were. Uh, after Selfridge's death, 
the Army conducted an investigation on the accident. Oval Wright was found innocent of any blame, and the accident was due to the right prop breaking and becoming flattened or uneven with what it should have been. And that caused an uneven thrust, which made the tapping noise within the aircraft. And due to the change in thrust, it made the prop shift slightly out of where it was supposed to be. And the prop struck on the wires that cut that controlled the rudder and cut them. So they lost control of the rudders, which just isn't good. And Thomas Selfridge was given a full military honors burial and he was buried in the Arlington National Cemetery.